Right, so uh, Jay was scheduled to deliver the talk. Uh, he cannot come. It's my pleasant duty as a, a chief organizer to give the talk. Um, so, um, okay, so today, uh, is that the second talk in the uh, series about quantum groups at uh, Roots of Unity. Uh, however, we won't see any quantum groups at Roots of Unity today. We continue to talk about algebraic groups and other things uh, in characteristic P. And the reason is that uh, this provides us with motivation for uh, what we will be doing uh, for quantum groups at Roots of Unity. And to start, I want to remind uh, you uh, about some things that were done uh, by Jay in the previous talk. So, we start with a characteristic P field, let's call it F. And we take an algebraic group, let's call it G, and uh, we have a CD algebra and the universal enveloping algebra. And then uh, Jane introduced the P map, also known as P's power map, uh, denoted by uh, superscript P. So that's a map which goes from G to itself. It has the following property. First of all, uh, you know, uh, it has a definition. We can identify G with uh, the algebra of left invariant vector field sum as a group G. Um, and then uh, if we take X and G, then X to P is also left invariant derivation. So an element of this Lie algebra, and this is, um, uh, how we define x to uh, square bracket. And uh, if you look at this definition, you can easily persuade yourself that it's functorial. So if you have an algebraic group homomorphism, uh, capital Phi, then the corresponding uh, homomorphism of the algebras, let me call it small Phi, uh, will intertwine the P-maps. Okay. Then you can ask yourself, how can we compute this uh, mapping practice? For example, let's take the general linear group G. Okay. And then it's an exercise to show that X to uh, P square bracket is the same as X to P as a matrix. That's a computation with uh, vector fields. Now, uh, knowing this, uh, if we manage to embed our algebraic group G into GLN, and we are talking about a fine algebraic group, so that's always possible, then still by functoriality and this exercise, uh, we know that X to uh, P square bracket is still P power of a matrix. Uh, any questions? All right, now, as Jay mentioned, um, a consequence, if you want, of um, the same exercise and the same factoriality property is that the adjoint of X to P square bracket is the same as uh, P's uh, power of adjoint of X. And finally, we need to understand how the P map uh, interacts with addition um, in our Lie algebra, well, multiplication is easy. Uh, so when I multiply uh, by A under the map, then I have the factor of A to power P. That's by definition. And then the interaction with addition is controlled by the following fact. So if you have a free uh, algebra, uh, free associative algebra in two variables, X and Y, then you can look at this element. Uh, x plus y to power p minus x to power p minus y to power p. And this element turns out to be a Lie polynomial in x and y, which means that it can be written as, uh, you know, as the sum of brackets in x and y. And we denote it by L of x, y. And you again can look uh, at the defining property and the fact and you deduce that for a uh, P square bracket map, X plus Y goes to X 
to the square bracket p plus y square bracket p plus this polynomial, which is a well-defined quantity because it's a Lie polynomial. Now, uh, let me just give, a, give this a name uh, by a PD algebra. Uh, uh, that's right. So uh, uh, this element is primitive. The order in PBW filtration is, well, I mean, this element here. The order in PBW filtration is uh, less or equal than P minus one, and every such element lies in uh, the Lie algebra, uh, where the Lie algebra is in question is a free Lie algebra. Okay. At least the seven organizers finally agreed on something. That's great. Okay. Um, so uh, the definition uh, a PD algebra is a Lie algebra together with uh, this map, which satisfies properties uh, four, two, six, which are which is this one, uh, this one, and this one. And for example, uh, the Lie algebra of an algebraic group is a peer Lie algebra, and also an associative algebra, together with the usual piece power map, is a PD algebra. That's, uh, that's an easy consequence of the previous discussion. OK, questions, please. Right, so this was a pre-recorded message about what we've done last time. Now, um, uh, the first topic for today, and this is going to be relatively short, is about uh, the center and uh, central reductions. Of your key. And the point is that this uh, uh, P map allows us to define a large central subalgebra uh, in U of T. So what we do, uh, let's consider uh, the map iota going from G to U, which is my shortcut for U of G. And it's defined as follows. So iota of x, it's going to be x to power p. This is a uh, usual piece power in the universal enveloping algebra minus x to square bracket p. And uh, this guy has a uh, degree p. And this guy uh, lies in the algebra, it has degree one. Okay. And exercise is to use the above, namely um, uh, properties number four, uh, which is here, and property number six, which is here. Uh, to show that, first of all, uh, yota of x is central. That's uh, just property number four. And property number six implies that uh, it's additive. Okay. Now uh, it's not linear, it's semi linear. So plus yota is semi linear. Uh, namely, 
if uh, well, if I multiply this argument by a, then the result is going to be multiplied by a to p. So, and I'm going to assume uh, from now on that my field F is perfect. So uh, it has a tomorphism which is taking this root. Okay. So I can twist uh, F multiplication on G by uh, a tomorphism. A goes to A to power one over P of F. And then my map with this new multiplication, uh, Yota becomes honestly linear. So the resultant space which is G with new multiplication uh, is uh, denoted by uh, G round bracket one and it's Frobenius twist. Any questions? Um, yeah, could I ask, so you said x to the p is in degree p. Um, this is in the universal enveloping algebra. So is it, uh, I mean, the relations aren't homogeneous, uh, right? Well, filtration degree. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, more questions? All right, so uh, what do we have? Uh, we get an F linear map. Iota going from G of one to uh, the center of the universal enveloping algebra and uh, well, it factors through the symmetric algebra. And let me abuse the notation and also call this map IOTA. An easy exercise based on PBW. Well, let me observe the coloring convention. So an exercise on PBW uh, tells you that IOTA is injective and it makes U into a free module over S uh, G of one Uh, with basis of the form x1 to power d1, xn to power dn, uh, with uh, di lying between uh, 0 and p minus 1. And of course, uh, x1 through xn is a basis uh, in G. And it's uh, not very difficult um, exercise because, you know, when you look at this formula, uh, you see the leading term x to power p. And that's basically what contributes to this exercise. Okay. Now uh, we can give it a name. So definition 
this image of SG1 uh, is called uh, the P center. Okay. Uh, questions? Now, uh, let me mention the following important object, uh, which is restricted universal enveloping. And I'm going to denote it by uh, U0 of G in J's notes, you will find a different notation. So what it is, uh, well, if, you know, if I have a central subalgebra in whatever algebra, I can do a base change. And here I'm just going to do a base change to the point zero in the spectrum of the central subalgebra. And what it means, it means that I take uh, U of G and I'm out by the two-sided ideal generated by the elements of the form X2 honest P minus X2 P square bracket where X lies in G. Okay. This is a finite dimensional algebra. Uh, with basis, well, the same form as we had here. So it's um, x1 to d1, xn to dn, with di uh, between 0 and p minus 1. Why do we care? Well, this thing has a universal property. For example, we'll see uh, some more reasons to care about it. And uh, that's a uh, universal property similar to the usual universal enveloping algebra, but for maps of uh, PV algebras. So if A is an associative algebra, and uh, therefore uh, PV algebra, then any uh, PV algebra homomorphism uh, from G to A are uh, uniquely Vectors through uh, associative algebra homomorphism uh, from U zero G to A. And why? Well, because you know. This sort of uh, factors out uh, the difference between the two P maps, the P map in the associative algebra and the P map in our D algebra G. That's what we need to know about this restricted to universal enveloping for now. Are there questions? What's F0? Uh, F0 is a module where uh, G1, so this is a 
as G1 module. on F with uh, G1 dual acting by zero. Okay? Yes, thanks. My questions. All right, so uh, I talked about the uh, P center. So how about the full center? As this also can be described, this is a remark that we are not going to need. We put star. So uh, full center. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can take the group G and it still acts on you. So in particular, you can consider the subalgebra of G invariance And this, of course, sits inside of the uh, subalgebra of invariance for the Lie algebra, which is the center. And that's called the Harishandra center. That's another central subalgebra. And uh, we discussed Harishandra isomorphism uh, earlier in the seminar. So you can show that uh, Harishandra center is always isomorphic to wild group invariance uh, in the action functions on HDO. Actually, this holds for all P. And then under um, some restrictions, and you can read about this in Jay's notes, so under some very modest um uh, restrictions on p and on g we have the following theorem due to Valtkamp. i may be uh misspelling the name i'll fix this in the notes which tells us that the center of U is isomorphic to the following thing. So it's generated by the Harishandra center and the P center. Maybe I can just write uh, as G of one. And uh, these generators are, are kind of as free from each other as they can be. So that's a tensor product over the intersection. And the intersection, let me put some more space. So I tensor over the invariance of the group in S of G1. Okay. So that's a complete description of uh, the center. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, what do you mean by modest restrictions? I mean modest restrictions that I'm not going to give in the stock and which you can read about in Jay's notes, which will be posted. Like P is very good for the group, something like this. Whatever this means. Uh, P bigger than H should definitely be enough. That's right.
And actually, some discuss some discussion of uh, this question can be found in Roma's paper with uh, uh, Mirkovich and Romanian on uh, localization characteristic P. All right. So uh, we talked about the universal enveloping algebra, but that's not going to be our main hero for today. Our main hero for today will be the distribution algebra. And before we get into discussion, so let me uh, explain some motivation for why we care. So what we care about is uh, rational representations of uh, the group G. And of course, we have a factor, which is kind of forgetful factor. From the category of such representations, which I will call rad FD. So this are uh, uh, finite dimensional. Uh, rational representations to the category of finite dimensional modules over the universal enveloping algebra. For example, this is because that when you have a homomorphism of algebraic groups, it gives you uh, homomorphisms of corresponding V algebras. Okay, but Uh, over F, let's say algebraically closed for simplicity, characteristic P field, uh, this factor is far from being in fields. It's neither essentially subjective meaning that you don't capture all modules in the image. Uh, in fact, one can show that we land in modules over the restricted enveloping algebra. And certainly this is very far from being all finite dimensional modules. Uh, more full. For example, uh, as we will see right away, this functor maps non isomorphic modules to isomorphic ones. And the easiest example uh, is the following. So let's take G to be the multiplicative group. And let's take representation um, V, which is one dimensional, which is F as a base field, as well, the base field F. And the action is given by T applied to V is T to power P times V. So the derivative of T to P is zero. And uh, so the corresponding uh, G module is trivial. So once we are in characteristic P, uh, the representations of the algebraic group are no longer controlled by its Lie algebra. So what, what to do? Uh, what we want to do, the goal 
is uh, we replace u of g with a different algebra. The algebra of distributions, which I will call uh, this of g, uh, with a functor, which is also forgetful, some science, uh, from um, uh, red fd of g to finite dimensional modules over this algebra. And you know, on the level of the vector space, which is just the identity as before, which is closer to being an equivalent. It's still not an equivalence, and if, you know, time permits, uh, we'll see examples, but it's fairly close to being equivalent. And moreover, uh, in fact, this restricted universal enveloping algebra U0G will see it inside of uh, this G. And uh, the functor from rational representations of G to dist uh, G mod FD lifts the function that we had before. So to get from uh, this new functor to our old functor, you just need to restrict to the subalgebra. And that's it. Okay, so that's our goal. Are there any questions? Is anybody still alive? Yes. Okay, we have one survivor. That's great. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, Vanya. Okay. I, I am alive too and kicking. Whom do you kick? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. All right. I think I better not know. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, proceed to the definition of this algebra. And um, for our purposes, we now take a more general base. So let's take a, a small k uh, to be a commutative Nazarian ring. Um, G is going to be a fine group scheme. Over k. I.e., we have algebra of regular functions, which is, um, you know, uh, finitely generated. Well, commutative and co-commutative. No, uh, just just commutative. Sorry. Um, uh, 
uh, of algebra. Uh, we have a distinguished element one in, in any algebraic group. So in the, this language, we'll have a maximal ideal, which we'll call M. Well, it's not maximal in general, so it's a kernel of epsilon G. Uh, or in other words, it's uh, all functions um, in G whose value at one is equal to zero. And finally, annotation, if we have a module Oh, just an arbitrary module over K. Then we can talk about its dual V star, which is going to be home over K from V to K. And maybe I should say that we care about our K equals that. Uh, Q, or maybe let's say algebraic closed field of characteristic P. Okay. Now, so distribution algebra is some dual object. It has to do with functions on G. And uh, first of all, we can consider the full dual. Do, do we need to assume that it is flat over R? Uh, yeah. Well, but we mostly care about examples and examples, it definitely is. <laughs> so we assume. Um, yeah, that's right. Otherwise, there will be uh, issues. So maybe if even projective, something like projective. Uh, let's say uh, free. Okay. Right. So the full dual is an algebra. Uh, with respect to convolution, um, which is delta star. Where delta denotes a coproduct. Okay, uh, this we have seen before, but it's this algebra is too big. Uh, inside, we can consider the smaller subalgebra functions that are local at one. So, what does it mean? So, definition uh, part one for n big or equals than zero, we define uh, this less or equal than n of g as the dual of kg modulo this ideal m to power n. Okay, and this sits inside of our kg dual. And the name for this uh, is the module of distributions Uh, of order less or equal than n. Okay. And we note that we have an inclusion. So d less or equal than n sits inside d less or equal than n plus one. It's just by definition. And so we define uh, this G is going to be the module of all distributions, 
to be just a union overall n of dist less or equal than mg. Question, please. So, so is this uh, the same as uh, left invariant differential operators in the sense of Grot and Dick on O of G, K of G? Uh, yeah, I think so. So maybe it's an even simpler definition then. Uh, it's very easy to define differential operator. And it's very easy to define distribution. <laughs> yeah. Well, but a differential operator is a global object, and this is an object which kind of which makes sense for every variety, you know, at a point. Mm -hmm. That's right. More questions? Well, can you could you quickly remind me what's the geometric meaning of this G? Like you say, it's local around one. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just all uh, you know, all linear functions which vanish on. Uh, if you want, you can just say that, you know, you have a filtration on uh, the algebraic functions by the power of this ideal, and you, this gives you a topology, and you just take discrete functions. Right, so you say it's a, a function that vanishes around one, or it's local around one? Well, local around one. Low round, okay. Thanks. Well, every function will vanish on some power of maximal ideal, but you don't specify this one. Yes, thanks. Okay. So claim, so why we care, that in fact, this G is a Hopf algebra. So this fellow here, this full dual is just an algebra. The Hopf algebra doesn't make sense because of uh, finiteness issues. But all the issues get resolved uh, on this G. Uh, so I'm not going to prove this. Let me just give you a series of exercises. So um, exercise. Is that uh, well? This G sits inside of an associative algebra, and in fact, it is subalgebra. It's closed undertaking property, and that's a nice exercise. And how uh, should we get the co-product? Well, uh, this G is dual of a Hopf algebra, so the co-product on this G should come from the product on uh, KMG. So co-product. On this G. So we have um, a multiplication map. Mu uh, from KG to terms of KG to itself. And we notice that the scene descends to the map bit, uh, from the tensor product of the um, quotient by the maximal ideal. Of course. And so I can, so let me call this map also by mu. So I can take the dual and I get uh, from d less or equals than n, g2 Okay, and uh, then this kind of gives me 
is a co-product. Uh, on this G. Um, exercise for especially hardworking participants. And here, well, uh, you notice that I'm not really careful with my assumptions, so maybe you need to put some uh, additional freeness assumptions I haven't checked, but uh, these assumptions are satisfied in good situations. Uh, so the exercise is to define the antipode on this G and show it's a whole function. Uh, questions? Well, for any infinite dimensional half algebra, there should be a general theorem on this, on this duo that says if you restrict to some smaller one, you automatically get a half algebra. Is that correct? Mm. Do experts on half algebra want to say anything about it? Yes, yes, that's right. And in fact, uh, this is an instance of that, I think. Uh, so there is a, for if you have any Hopf algebra, you can consider uh, the subspace of its dual, which consists of elements that change according to finite dimensional representation under the action of on the left and on the right. And, uh, and that's a Hopf algebra, which is called finite dual. And I think this is just finite dual of K of G, right? Uh, well, I mean, uh... it's sub, maybe it's a sub algebra there. That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, it's contained in there, I think. Well, definitely KG is, uh, is, 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 is in finding a dual of this G and uh, vice versa, I'm not sure. Oh, vice versa, it's not true, but, uh, but it's a, it's a subalgebra in the finite dual, I think. All right. Well, maybe. In any case, we care about just uh, a, a few examples, and then uh, maybe interested participants can, can think about those examples. Uh, more questions? Okay. Um, let me, um, let's see, it's 450. Uh, let me make, let me give you some more exercises. So first uh, is again about functoriality. So uh, if you have a homomorphism of algebraic groups, then of course it gives you the dual uh, well, let me say that this is an algebraic group homomorphism. Uh, then it gives you the pullback on functions. And this gives you uh, push forward on distributions. And uh, this thing is a whole algebra common box. Okay, and then uh, there is an exercise about base change, which uh, actually quite important because we are going to use it. So 
So if uh, you have some K algebra K prime, then the algebra of distributions for GK prime is obtained from the algebra of distributions for G by base change. And so the way how we are going to apply this is that, uh, you know, we'll understand, well, our, the groups that we care about, uh, the groups that we care about are defined over the integers. So we'll understand the distribution algebra over the integers. And then we can do base change. And to understand it over the, the integers, uh, we need to understand it over the ratios. And maybe let me make a comment on the connection with universal enveloping algebra after which uh, we are going to have a break. Okay. So uh, connection uh, between U of G and uh, uh, distribution something. So we know that uh, in the settings that we care about, U of G is uh, left invariant uh, but you may want to mute yourself when you're not speaking. Uh, so um, left invariant uh, differential operators. on G in the usual sense. And in particular, uh, U of G embeds into endomorphisms over K of um, K of G. Now uh, we define a map uh, from U of G to the uh, full dual of KG as follows. So what do we need to do? We need to, uh, uh, let's call it, I don't know, eta. So we need to take element A U of G and uh, we need to compute eta of a, uh, but to compute it, we need to evaluate it on the function. So what you do uh, is this, uh, a is a differential operator, so you can apply it to function, and then you evaluate it at one. So you get an element here, and in fact, you know, you have a differential operator. So uh, the image of eta uh, will, must lie in this G, and moreover, eta from uh, U of G to this G uh, respects filtrations. On the source, we have PBW filtration. On the target, we have filtration by the order of distribution. And so these filtrations are respected. And moreover, one can show that eta is an algebra homomorphism. Now, let me tell you uh, two facts. And these facts will uh, describe how this uh, homomorphism eta behaves over fields. 
depending on their characteristic. Facts. First, if uh, uh, this little k is characteristic zero field, Uh, then it is an isomorphism. Uh, but if, if k sense or the second sense, uh, it uh, well, I mean, in in the in in in. Let me write this more. Um, Uh, explicitly, so it's an isomorphism with uh, d stop g. So this kind of this is as a, as a, as a model of the story that this is a reasonable guy, and uh, this is not a reasonable guy. Okay. Okay. So that's a characteristic zero story. In particular, uh, there is no problem computing distributions over the rations, and this is what we are going to use. Now, if uh, K is characteristic P field, then uh, our homomorphism is very far from being an isomorphism. So then, it factors through the embedding from U zero G uh, into D of G. So the image is very small. So both of this algebra are infinite dimensional and the image is finite dimensional. All right, um, are there questions? Questions, comments? Or maybe a silly question. The so you did you write R before and say that as a commutative ring and suddenly switch to K or it's just no 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 it's K it's all K and it's so K, K was supposed to be a commutative ring and that's all yeah okay okay yeah that's kind of it's not just some crazy commutative ring as one of those guys ah okay all right let's declare ten minutes break. And uh, meanwhile, okay, so we resume at 5.10. Meanwhile, if people have questions, uh, they are very welcome to ask. So does anybody have any questions? Let me pause the recording. And uh, I gave you definition, now I need to give you some uh, examples. And uh, I will first read examples of dimension one. And then we will talk about uh, what happens for semi-simple groups. So, Let's take G to be the edited group. And what do we get? So the algebra of regular functions is polynomials in one variable. Let me call it T. Uh, the coproduct sends the variable T to T times the one plus one times the T. Okay, and the ideal M is generated by the cell in T. So what do we need to, uh, what, what, what we will do, we will just see that uh, our distribution algebra is a free module whose basis is indexed by negative integers. And let me tell you who the basis element is. So let me take um, R, no negative integer. And then I define gamma sub r going to be a function on 
uh, G in the following way. So gamma sub R evaluated at T to power N is just Kronecker delta of R and N. Okay. And you can easily see that it's, uh, this is distribution of order N, of order, sorry, R. Okay, and so um, the elements uh, gamma zero, gamma one, and so on, gamma r and so on, uh, form a basis in the distribution algebra. I'm not going to explain the whole algebra structure, but let me tell you how these elements are multiplied. So what do we need to do? But as usual, uh, write convolution for the product. And I want to evaluate it on elements at to power n. Oh, sorry, small t. So I need to apply the tensor product of gamma r and gamma s to uh, the coproduct of t to power n. And what is this? Uh, it's easy to see that. Uh, we get the sum from i equals zero to m uh, and choose i, uh, t to the i times the t to n minus i. Okay. And then kind of, uh, so the first factor peaks uh, t to power r here and the second factor peaks t to power s here. So, what we are going to get is um, n choose r if n is equal to r plus s and uh, zero else. Okay. Uh, conclusion is that gamma r times gamma s is uh, r plus s choose s gamma r plus s. So that's algebra stuff. Now, as was mentioned uh, before, it's enough to understand what the distribution algebra, uh, the structure of distribution algebra over the integers. And over the integers, we have a nice, just nice description. Uh, first of all, let's notice that from this equality, we immediately deduce gamma one to power n is uh, n factorial uh, gamma sub n. So um, what does uh, this of g sub z look like? Well, it sits inside of this uh, sub q. And the way how it sits there is that we have the span over the integers of gamma one to power i over i factorial. So we just, you know, formally divide uh, both sides of this by n factorial. And here i runs over negative integers. And this makes sense as a submodule inside of span over Q of gamma one to power I, which is just a distribution algebra of G over Q. Okay. And you can see that uh, this algebra is, is very much like Nazarian. I mean, it's an infinitely generated thought. Uh, questions?
Should I ask if anybody is alive? I am. Okay, as I say, I can see. Anybody else? Uh, so this is for on characteristic. So this is always the integers. And if you want to get uh, the formula for any other ring, you just do base change. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go to the example of the multiplicative group. Uh, G sub m. So here, the regular functions is Laurent polynomials is the variable t. Um, the ideal we care about is generated by t minus one. And then uh, delta of t is t tensor t. And you can do a very similar computation. You can uh, introduce the element, let me call it beta sub r uh, in uh, k of g dual in a pretty similar way, but now um, you need to evaluate it uh, to evaluate this element at t minus, oh, sorry, small t minus one to power n, and this is delta uh, and r. Then again, uh, the i for i big or equals than zero form a basis, well, I mean, additive basis, well, k basis, k basis in uh, dist of g. And to multiply this, to, to learn how to multiply this element, um, uh, we should observe the following formula. So beta r of t to power n is uh, n choose r. This is an easy consequence of uh, this equality. So an exercise which is suggested by this uh, computation is the following. Uh, for all n, we have n factorial beta times n, uh, beta sub n is the product uh, beta one beta one minus one, uh, beta one minus n minus one. So you can write that beta sub n is uh, beta one choose n. And this again makes sense uh, in the same way as this formula does. So, Uh, distribution algebra of G sub Z is spent by uh, the elements beta one choose I, where I is big or equals than zero. And this makes sense as a, sub, as a, a subset or some subgroup of q uh, beta one, which is uh, the distribution algebra of uh, G sub q. Uh, questions, please. All right, let's uh, move on and uh, talk about 
the distribution algebra for uh, semi-simple G. And I want to assume also uh, that G is simply connected. And I want to compute, um, so this group is defined over the integers. So I want to understand what um, the distribution algebra of G sub Z is. And how do I understand it? Well, uh, it sits inside of uh, distribution algebra for G sub Q which is nothing else as the universal enveloping algebra of G sub Q. That's something that you understand quite well. And I want to understand how um, this guy sits inside. Okay. So for this, I will need notation. Uh, pi inside of phi plus is going to be simple and positive roots. And then um, uh, inside of my group G, I have three subgroups. I have N uh, minus T and N out of G. So it's a uh, mm, maximal unipotence. And maximal torus. And then inside of each uh, three of them, I have a whole bunch of one dimensional subgroups. So here they are indexed by positive roots and in T they are indexed by simple roots. So if I have alpha uh, a positive root, then this gives me a uh, root subgroups, which I'm going to denote uh, just GA with superscript plus minus alpha. Uh, so this is a subgroup in N plus minus. And if uh, I have a simple root beta, this gives me a subgroup uh, GM super beta inside of T. And these collections of subgroups decompose um, uh, these two unipotent groups and uh, this um, uh, reductive group and two products. So namely, um, we have um, uh, the T is a product over beta in pi of G and beta as a group, as algebraic group. And then um, N plus minus is a product of alpha and phi plus of G A plus minus alpha. Well, this of course not as a group, that's as a scheme. Okay. And then I have an uh, open grill cell um, and minus, write it like this, and minus times T times N inside of G. And this um, open grass cell is a product of um, all the subgroups that I have introduced. So GA minus alpha, the product with beta over pi G 
Tm beta, then product is alpha over phi plus uh, G A alpha. Okay. And the important thing is that uh, this uh, open uh, subvariety actually contains one. Okay. So, you know, distributions which only know about the point one are going to be fully controlled by what happens here. Okay. So my variety, so as a space, you know, distributions only depend on the variety structure. And in the neighborhood of uh, the point one, uh, my variety looks like such, like this product, where all factors are subgroups. Okay, uh, questions? Uh, is it may be unrelated, but do we have uh, the description for other smaller cells in this type? Uh, what do you mean by smaller cells? Uh, so this is the open cell, right? I mean, you have the composition for also great groups over that. I mean, and it's. You know, it's, it, it, it doesn't depend on the base rate, from what I remember. And it's true, that's an unrelated question to what we're doing. Yes. All right, so how are we going to use this decomposition to describe uh, the distributions over Z as, a, as sitting inside of here? Well, uh, you know, say uh, algebraic group homomorphism from G A alpha to G gives rise to the embedding of distribution algebras. So with that alpha into Uh, this uh, GZ. And here we have generators like, um, let say gamma one. And this is, uh, so this uh, subgroup is a root subgroup. So gamma one will go to the corresponding element, which I will call E alpha, it will sit here. Uh, similarly, well, I can write maybe plus minus alpha, plus minus alpha, plus minus alpha, and we have a, a similar picture for the multiplicative subgroups. And the elements we will call beta sub one uh, will go to the corresponding simple chord. And if you wish, this is just the notation, but also if you base change to Q, these are now elements of uh, the Lie algebra, of Lie algebra G sub Q, okay? And this direct sum decomposition, let me give it maybe a, a name, let me call it star. So star, it just gives, uh, turns the product decomposition, send the product over the integers, uh, decomposition of, this 
each of z. And we arrive at the following theorem. Um, that the algebra of distributions viewed as an abelian subgroup in uh, U of GQ has the following additive basis. So how is this basis obtained? So I take my basis for the additive subgroups and for the multiplicative subgroups, and I just multiply them together uh, in some order, which reflects the order of uh, factors here. Now, what was the basis for, uh, for additive subgroups? Uh, it's here and it looks like this. It's what's called divided powers. And for the multiplicative subgroups, it was like this. Okay, so I can just uh, write the basis uh, in the semi-simple case as follows. So I will have product, this product in some order. Uh, over alpha in phi plus, um, E minus alpha, well, maybe I should write this ledger. Um, so E to alpha to power K sub alpha over K sub alpha factorial. Then I have product over simple roots of uh, beta choose, let's say, M sub beta. And then I have a, so the first one should be, I think, minus alpha. Then I have a product for alpha in phi plus, uh, E alpha to power N alpha over N alpha factorial. Okay. So the distribution algebra viewed as a abelian subgroup inside of uh, U of GQ is spanned by this basis element. Where, of course, the, integer, the uh, powers, uh, K alpha and alpha, and M beta are non-native integers. Questions, please. So could you remind me why this GZ embeds into UQ, uh, UGQ? Uh, because you, uh, you can show uh, from this description that it's a free module. Okay. And this thing here is just, oops, uh, this thing here is just this uh, GQ, which is a base change of this to Q. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. So once you know that this is free, then uh, it it embeds. Thanks. Uh, more questions. Is this the same as the uh, the constant form? Yes. Great. That's right. Uh, and maybe for uh, the future use, let me introduce some notation. And the notation is uh, e to power n, or maybe alpha to power n um, round brackets is e alpha to n over n factorial. That's divided power. All right. 
This finishes our discussion of distribution of algebras as such. And the last topic that I hope I'll be able to do today is about uh, Frobenius. And let's start with uh, Frobenius homomorphism in general. All right. Um, so the general setting is this. I will start with A. Oh, sorry, I will start with uh, F, which is going to be perfect field uh, of characteristic P. And I will have A uh, finitely generated. Uh, commutative F algebra. And so I can consider its spectrum. So you call X. And then let me make a basic observation. is uh, taking this power is an endomorphism of algebra. Uh, is a ring endomorphism. Uh, it's not an algebra homomorphism because, uh, you know, it's not linear and we can make it F linear. If we twist uh, F multiplication on the source by uh, uh, maybe let me use some other variable X. So A um, uh, to power one over P, where A is an F. And we denote the resulting algebra by uh, A superscript one around brackets. So that's an F algebra. And so uh, X goes to X to power P from A1 to A uh, is an F algebra homomorphism. Uh, questions? Now, to give a homomorphism of algebra is the same thing as to give a morphism of the corresponding varieties in uh, the opposite direction. So I will have Frobenius morphism from X to X1. And uh, it's of course defined by saying that the pullback of a function, well, let me also cannot get a good notation for elements. So let me write F here. So F, F, F. So Frobenius uh, pullback of F is just F to P. Okay. Uh, 
uh, now a little exercise uh, is to show that if uh, a is defined over the simple field fp then in fact a1 and A are isomorphic as algebras over F. Not just rings. Okay. So suppose now uh, A is a Hopf algebra. Then uh, F goes to F to power P is a Hopf algebra homomorphism. So we can pass to spectrum. So uh, let uh, G be the spectrum of A, and it's an algebraic. Uh, then Frobenius from uh, G to G1 is an algebraic group home. This reflects the fact that uh, uh, the corresponding pullback is a uh, Hopf algebra homomorphism. And that's the Frobenius homomorphism from uh, the title of this section. Okay. Uh, questions, please. Okay, let me do something cruel. Let me uh, give you an exercise, well, example, and somebody will tell me uh, the answer. So let's uh, let's suppose that uh, G is GLM. Then if we believe uh, the previous exercise here, uh, the Frobenius twist of GLM is also GLM. So my Frobenius is going to be uh, from GLN to GLN. And let's try to compute it on a matrix. Let's say the matrix is AIJ. So what does it do to a matrix? P powers every entry. Uh, P is power of every entry. That's, that's right. Thank you. So AIJ to power P. So in a general, it looks like it, it, it looks like this. So nothing uh, too complicated. Uh, any questions? If you have a Peely algebra, does that integrate to something like this? Uh, nope, because uh, you know, uh, if you still differentiate, if you differentiate this power, you get zero. So Frobenius will give you zero homomorphism of the algebras. Okay, so the last thing that I want to discuss today is how Frobenius interacts with uh, distribution algebra. And then uh, somebody, maybe me, maybe Jay, will discuss Frobenius kernels and also connection between categories of representations uh, uh, next time. Hmm.
So, uh, uh, what's going on here? Well, uh, any algebraic group homomorphism will give you the corresponding homomorphism of distribution algebras. And we want to understand what Frobenius does to distribution algebras. So let me denote the corresponding homomorphism by Frobenius stop. So it goes to dist G to dist uh, G1. Well, let's look at an example. Let's say uh, G is uh, the additive group and therefore the Frobenius space is also that. Uh, and then, um, well, we know how the distribution algebra look like. Uh, it has a basis over F of elements which were called gamma i and those were defined gamma i of t to power n uh, was defined as uh, as one as uh, sorry uh, delta i n okay so uh, what does, um, oops, one second. Uh -huh. So we need to understand what uh, Frobenius lower star does to uh, this basis element. So how do we do this? Uh, we need to compute this result on t to power n. And of course, uh, it's just gamma i of uh, Frobenius upper star of t to power n. And so uh, Frobenius upper star just takes piece power. So we have gamma i of t to power np. Therefore, what do I get? Uh, Frobenius lowest term of gamma i is given by this formula, which looks very funny. So it's gamma i divided by p if i is divisible by p. And it's zero else, right? That's what uh, this formula here tells me. Okay, so if I can divide the index by p, I do so. And if not, I just send my element to zero. Uh, questions? Uh, let me do one more example. Example number two with now a multiplicative group, which is also the same as a Frobenius twist and uh, distributions of this group are spanned by elements that we call beta. where now uh, beta i of uh, t minus one to n is delta i n. And for exactly the same reason as before, uh, we'll have that Frobenius push forward of beta i is 
uh, beta i over p, if i is divisible by p, and zero else. For the same reason, that's the same computation. And finally, we can say what's going to happen um, uh, in the examples that we care about most when G is uh, semi-simple and simply connected. The way how we are going to understand this example is uh, more or less the same as we understood the basis, the additive basis of the corresponding algebra. So we still use uh, those one dimensional um, uh, subgroups. And we observe that, for example, a commutative diagram like so. So we have a commutative diagram. Uh, G A alpha includes into G. Then I have the corresponding Frobenius homomorphisms. So this diagram here commutes. And to this, you just write the corresponding diagram on the level of algebra and you use that Frobenius is just, is just taking this power. So it generally commutes with every homomorphism of algebra. So I can pass to distributions and get the following commutative diagram. Uh, dist uh, G alpha A uh, maps to uh, dist G and I have Rabinus put for us like such. And moreover, well, uh, recall that uh, these groups don't change when we do Frobenius twist. So, um, we can just remove it. So, I know what uh, Frobenius push forward does here to a basis element. And uh, for the same reason, I know what's going to happen for multiplicative groups. So, I can write the following formula. I have a basis element. Uh, e minus alpha to power, let's say k alpha and the product or between pi uh, beta uh, choose m beta and then the product over alpha in phi plus e alpha to power n alpha. Uh, let me remind you that this is a notation for divided powers. Factor uh, e to this power divided by factorial. So where does this go? Well, we know what happens to each individual uh, factor. So for example, this guy is going to go to the divided power uh, of k alpha over p, if this makes sense, or to zero. And of course, Frobenius uh, push forward is a homomorphism. So I can write the following formula. So we'll get this product. Um, e minus alpha to power k alpha over p 
the product beta choose m beta over p then product e alpha to divided power n alpha over p if uh, p divides all k alpha m all m beta and n alpha okay and i have zero else so that's what uh for under frobenius does to distribution algebra questions All right, so um, let me explain what I was going to happen next. So there are still a few things to discuss uh, in this section. Uh, we need to discuss uh, Fabinius kernels and we need to discuss uh, connection between rational representations of G and uh, representations of the distribution algebra. So that's going to I'll take maybe half of the next lecture. And then uh, we'll get back to quantum groups. And so what kind of, maybe I should say a few words of, uh, a few words about uh, what we are going to discuss for quantum groups. So, uh, we'll see that the truth of unity will consider two forms of a quantum group. So one is going to behave like um, like what? Like U of G. Okay, the the continue uh, the continue cast form. And it's going to have a big center, which is going to be given by some formula. It's not going to be formula like this because it doesn't really make sense. It's going to be some related formula. And uh, kind of this uh, central subalgebra will look like a symmetric algebra of uh, G of one, but with a suitable multiplicative twist. In fact, it's going to be regular functions on the dual Poisson Lie group. Okay, so that's very similar to what happens here, but that's not kind of a focus of our discussion in this seminar. What's going to be the focus is. Um, the quantum counterpart of distribution algebra, the Lustig form. And the Lustig form is essentially going to be defined by, by this or quantum analog of this. Okay, so that's why we uh, state the theorem. For algebraic groups, we have a conceptual definition of distribution algebra as distributions. And then we have this description. For quantum groups, this, well, an analog of this becomes a definition. All right. So this works integrally. So for quantum groups, this is going to work over the base of Laurent polynomials uh, rather than integers. And then we, we specialize to roots of unity. And we see many phenomena, many phenomena that we see for algebraic groups. In particular, we will have Frobenius. So again, for algebraic groups, Frobenius has a conceptual definition. So you have a Frobenius homomorphism for the group, and then it gives you a homomorphism of distribution algebra. And we show that um, this homomorphism is described by the formula here. Okay. Now for quantum groups again, uh, this formula is going to be the definition. But an important difference is that for classical groups, 
uh, Frobenius in characteristic P go maps essentially to the same group. Okay. For quantum groups, this is going to map to the classical universal involved image. So that's uh, that's an explanation of how we do of uh, how what we do now is going to be relevant for what we want to do. All right. Are there questions? All right, guys, then uh, that's uh, the end of today, and uh, we resume in a week. And unless any, anybody wants to, thanks, Calder, unless, uh, thank Nate, uh, unless anybody wants to say anything, I'll just prend, press the end button and we'll finish this. Okay, one, two, three.